Thanks for joining me for another review. This one is for the Roto-Grip Rubicon. Typical ASIM layout of 5x3.5x2.5 by by and we're on Kegel Chromium at gauge. It's a challenge pattern at about 25 mils, 42 feet, and close to a 7 to 1 ratio. This one is really interesting. It has E-Trax S20 on it, so this year's version of the Solid Idle Pro cover. And the numbers of the new Rondeur core, as far as RG and Differential go, are the same as the Icon core from the Idles at 249 and 052 and 15 pounds, but it has a small amount of asymmetry coming in at 011. Most ASIMs are between 015 and 020 on the PSA or Intermediate Differential or Split or whatever you want to call it, so a greater amount of asymmetry that really differentiates them from Symmetrics. However, the idea with the Rubicon is to give you the feel of a big block symmetric with a weight hole. Weight holes can be used to both increase and decrease flare, but the most common or popular placement or reason to use one is to increase the flare and add some extra aggression and shape to symmetric balls or make them firmer down lane. The Rubicon hits the gap between something like an idle and a UFO. It's got more torque than a typical big block symmetric like the idle, but not as much as a top of the line ASIM like the UFO. I'm comparing it here to the Idol on Idol Pro, and we'll take a look at the Idol first. The Idol is both earlier and smoother, but on house shot, it's hard to visibly see it moving earlier. It's something I can feel though, so I have to be easier on it at the bottom. It is, however, visibly smoother, and one thing that my buddy Anthony pointed out is that it seems like the Idols lack conviction compared to the Rubicon, and that's the best way to put it. Now, that's not a bad thing. The Pink Monster showed up on every TV show over the summer, either for Daniel McEwen, Anthony Simonson, or Chris Prather, and have shown up a lot on TV over the last year or year and a half period. The Rubicon's just longer and quicker down lane than the Idol, point blank, but each reaction has its place and use. Now moving to the Idol Pro, it's longer and stronger than the Rubicon. It's been recently discontinued, and while I like it on both sides of the lane, it's a bit of a paradox. It's too quick from straighter angles, but it does straighten out down lane once you get deeper. The reason the Idol shows up so much on TV is because it's early and blends the lane out. It allows the heavy hands to hit it and roll it without it going crazy on friction. The Idol Pro is very visibly impressive, but it can put you in a phone booth sometimes. It just likes third arrow for me on both sides of the lane. Any further left is too straight, any further right is a little too steep for it. So even though it feels quicker on friction than the Rubicon, the Rubicon has the extra bit of torque to get it up and through the pins better from steeper angles, which was the point of the now banned weight holes. Moving to Royal Crest on the house shot, there's obviously a fair amount more forgiveness here. Gage is short on forgiveness anyway, but the Rubicon is a great matchup for this pattern in house. I can give it the nice easy fade from anywhere I want to throw it. I can buzz it down there, I can get deep and roll it. It's just a very comfortable shot here. I didn't have to help it, I didn't have to lay out of it. Just nice and relaxed. Now to be fair, this is one of the softer lefty shots I bolt on, but this might be the most comfortable I've felt anywhere with the ball. It just fits. Now looking at the idle, I still had to lay out of it a bit to get it down the lane here too. It looks great though, a nice around and controllable, and that's a great look on the left side. It's just like throwing darts further outside, but once I get deeper you can see the difference. The Rubicon still pulls up and is firmer, but the idle gets a little slower and softer from the steeper angles. Again, this is a great thing for heavier hands on wetter conditions, gives them traction and control, that's why you see it so often on TV. Also, realistically, I wouldn't intentionally get this deep on the left side, just in here for illustration, but on heavier conditions over here, this one's going to play a lot. Looking at the Idle Pro, it's a little too quick from straighter. I can shim it if I really try hard, but there's no reason to fight it. It's built to boom. Like I said, third arrow is the wheelhouse. It gets down the lane easier than either the Idle or Rubicon, and it pops more. However, once again, when we start getting deeper, it doesn't have the guts to get back up the hill with conviction like the Rubicon does. The Rubicon doesn't have the big torque that some ASIMs do, but it's in a really nice spot. It's got the lane control and strength of a big block sim with a little of the extra down lane firmness of an ASIM. The Rubicon releases on September 4th. Thanks for watching and may the strikes be with you.